I'd like to start off by just um, asking the Lord to bless this time. Um, Lord, you know that I'm a broken vessel, Lord, and I just ask you to fill my mouth with the words that you want me to say. And I pray that the Holy Spirit would intercede on our behalf, that the people would hear the words that they need to hear. Speak to your people, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'd like to start off by kind of giving a little bit of background as like how did this, uh, you know, how did this, our, our deliverance journey start? Um, this was not something that I would say we have pursued diligently. This was something that the Lord pursued on our behalf. Um, back in December, you know, Hazel felt led of the Lord to, to pray that that we would grow in um, in deliverance, whatever that means, grow in our ability to understand the supernatural and to take hold of that, like that God has taken hold of for us. And that was it. Uh, kind of left it at that, and God led us providentially to go to Ohio. We spent a month there. Uh, on the last Sunday that we were there, a man that we didn't know, first time we met him, says, hey, I want to pray for you. Um, prayed for us prophetically, and it was beautiful, uh, confirmed many things. As he's walking away, he said to us, said to Hazel specifically, hey, do you guys do, do you do deliverance ministry? Uh, no, no, um, but we prayed this prayer uh, back in December. Well, the Lord's gonna do it, so let's, let's pray for you and prayed for us that we would be involved in that in whatever way that looks like. Um, there's another friend that we met in, in Ohio that we told, we told her this experience, and she's like, if you're gonna go and seek deliverance or start down the road of deliverance ministry, this is where you need to go. Um, and recommended a place called Bear Creek Ranch in Georgia. And, and, it, and so we went and I, I didn't know what to expect at all. Uh, whatever I got wasn't what I expected. Uh, it was better, so it was way better. Um, you know, one thing I noticed is at the conference, I would say there's 19 participants. Um, I would say the vast majority were in the midst of deep darkness. Like they, they came to this place in the midst of suffering, in the midst of like seeking the God of second chances, uh, the God of last chances maybe for these for, for some, and, you know, for us, it wasn't that. It was just like God said, go there. And the theme that I saw, uh, the first day we introduced ourselves, uh, nothing, nothing in depth, not like, hey, what's your struggle? Um, everybody, it was very considerate that people may not want to go in a group of strangers and share their, their biggest wounds. And so we introduced ourselves. And just why are you here? Like, no details. Why are you here? And the theme was, I've walked with the Lord. I've walked with the Lord a long time. And I am suffering. Like, I do not have the freedom that, that is promised in the Bible. I, I have strongholds that no matter what I do, prayer, fasting, Bible reading, you name it, everything that... that that we're told like, hey, break the stronghold and the stronghold's still there. And I want free from that. Every single one of us, every, every one of the 19 people, that's the story. Um, for me, so what did that look like? So for me, uh, we got saved, I got saved o over 20 years ago. Um, for me, I experienced the immediate power of Jesus's blood, like immediate freedom. From some things, you know, um, specifically, there are some major strongholds. Uh, like I got saved at 18, 17, 18. Um, I got saved at 17, baptized at 18. 
and immediately, like God set me free from drug addiction. I was I was deep into drug use on a daily basis, free, no turning back. Um, immediately set free from greed, no turning back, not even a little. Like th- I mean, immediate things that these were like these were. If somebody saw me, who was Michael Woloski back in 1998? Boom, drugs, greed. That's that's it. That sums it up. Um, gone. So I said, I would say, like, looking back, I think a lot of people have these experiences that when they get saved, they are set free from real strongholds, right? And they think, like, that's it. Yes, Lord. And, um, and I guess as time went on, as the years went on, I'm like, these other strongholds were revealed or, or maybe things that I thought, this is not a big deal. And it's like, well, actually, this is destroying your life. Um, things I thought, this is part of who I am. No, this is not part of who you are. That This is a lie. And the Lord has come to set you free from these things. And so that's a little bit of the background. Uh, what is the process like? So what was the process? We went to this thing at Bear Creek Ranch a couple weeks ago. Process is real simple. Friday, you come in introductions kind of set you up what to what you're going to experience and the day is kind of intense uh they go over some things that you're supposed to have prepared for some people prepared some people didn't so they want to make sure everybody's on the same page done day two saturday they go in and it's like deliverance day it's it's like independence day saturday and um and it was not what I expected. Um, and, and then there's a debrief after that. You know, that's kind of quick. Move on. Uh, and then there's a debrief. And Saturday is like, what does any of this mean that we just did? And we talk about it. And we talk about what that means, what just happened mean, meant for each one of us. And people shared as much or as little as possible. There's no requirement. There's Nobody's digging into your past. Nobody's you know, twisting the knife of your pain. Um, it's liberating. I, and Sunday is like the healing journey begins. You know, I think a lot of people think when they think, what is deliverance ministry? And they think deliverance ministry is like something in the movies. People are throwing up. People's heads are spinning or levitating. And it's, it's not that. And it's not about the drama. It is about uh, the peace of Jehovah God on our lives, um, the healing balm of Gilead, right, on our lives. And, but we can't, we can't, ex- I don't think we can experience that healing. I'm going to say it for myself. I, don't, I could not have experienced that healing having not gone first through ripping out the garbage, right? Like, you got, like, if you think about, like, I was in the Army, you got, like, a bullet in you or a knife in you, we can't talk about healing until that's removed. Like, you can't say, hey, we're just going to put a bandage around that knife and leave it there and see what happens. Um, no, like, you, first you got to remove the thing causing the wound. Then you can worry about the healing process. And that what deliverance is, is removing the junk, removing... <laughs> The thing that's in you, the thing that's uh, that's hurting you, and allow the Lord to do His healing work, and His promise to us. Allow Him to do His promise to us. So that's the goal. Um, and really, the only verse I have to share, like I have some more of that, but there's a verse that is kind of the theme of of this ministry, which Pastor read uh, uh, prophetically. Um, Isaiah 61, 1 and 2, um, the spirit of, of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to, proc- to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prisons to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Yes, Lord. Um, and it's like, if we look at that, what is that? It's like, 
the good news to the poor, the gospel, uh, to bind up the brokenhearted, to give healing, to give us healing, to proclaim liberty to the captives, deliverance, uh, opening of the prisons to those who are bound, freedom, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. It's the year of Jubilee. It is. It's like it is, it is the year of Jubilee. We have to reach out and take that. And, and the year of Jubilee is just so beautiful. It is setting free of every slave. It is restoration of your inheritance in the Lord. It is claiming the land that God promised for each one of us. This is it. This is the, this is the year of Jubilee. And this is, what, this is what Jesus came for, for all of us. So, so I want to talk about what does this look like? What did this look like Saturday morning? And specifically, you know, I think a lot of, like I said, I think a lot of people, when they talk, think deliverance, they think really scary movies or something dramatic. And it's not. That's not it. Um, this, is, this ministry is covered in prayer. Uh, the whole time they have approximately 200 people around the world praying for what's going on there. Praying for what? Well, praying for us, uh, praying for the people doing the deliverance, praying that no demons manifest, praying that the demons are silent, um, praying that the Lord would move. Um, it's prophetic. It's prophetic deliverance. You know, when, they, when we went in there, they didn't say, write down every bad thing you've ever did, write down every struggle, write down what your dad did to you, your mom did to you. That you walked into a room with people we've never met. We haven't talked about any of our struggles. We haven't talked about anything that we had gone in. Um, there's hundred, a couple hundred people praying for us around, not in the room, around the world or wherever they are. And it was a peaceful thing. Each one of us had four people assigned to us. To, and they, we walk in, say, hey, what's your name? My name's Mike. All right, Mike, have a seat. They sought the Lord in prayer. And they each one had a piece of paper. And they just wrote down what they saw. Um, for me, three out of the four people that sought the Lord wrote down almost the exact same thing, what they saw. And what they saw, and meaning, what is the stronghold? What is this main stronghold that uh, what they call the chief and ruling spirit that, is, that, that has been oppressing Michael, maybe since birth? Uh, what is this thing that is oppressing him? And they each thought of the same thing. They prayed for that to be removed. And like Jesus, when he cast out Legion, hey, he, he addressed Legion. That's probably not his name. That's his function. They don't call any, they don't seek to name the demon. They seek to know what is the function this thing is having in this person's life. They name that. This thing is the chief and ruling spirit, meaning it has authority over whatever else that may be there. There may have been other things, but they say, look, just like Jesus had the authority to cast out Legion, and everything came out. Everything came out of the demoniac. And the demoniac didn't levitate. It, it didn't throw up or, or, you know, something crazy. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And he came to deliver us. The enemy comes to abuse us. The enemy comes to oppress us. Deliverance is not about abuse. It's about freedom and peace. And the, the process was peaceful. Like, I'm sitting there. They, they, they all wrote something down. They said what they saw. They prayed for the removal. I received it by faith. I walked over to somebody else. They prayed basically a prayer of, of the healing blood of Jesus, right? Like, if we think about uh, the story of the Samaritan, Samar the, the, the good Samaritan, the guys there on the ground, beaten up naked, what does he do? 
he pours wine over the man's wounds, the healing blood of Jesus. They pray the healing blood of Jesus over this wound that the, the, the implement of the affliction has been removed. Pour the blood of Jesus over that. What else did he do? He poured oil and bound his wounds. They pray the healing power, the healing balm of the Holy Spirit to fill up that wound so that the enemy doesn't return. When he comes back to look at the state of the house, the house is, is clean and it is filled. And <laughs> there's no room, there's no room, there's no foothold for the enemy to come back. And the, heal the healing journey begins. Um, we, we debriefed on, on Saturday afternoon, talked about what each one of us was delivered from. What does that mean? What does that oppression look like? Um, how do we move forward? And, and then the healing process begins. And Sunday is basically a day of, of acknowledging that How are these, how are the, like, basically the question is, a lot of people may ask, and what is answered on Sunday is, how did this happen, right? How did this oppression, affliction happen? And it's like anything. It's like we came into agreement with the enemy. We came into agreement. What does that mean? Well, that it says the enemy uh, speaks lies and is the father of lies uh, because that's his native language. And if we believe a lie, we're agreeing with the enemy. And we've given the enemy a place in us. And what, what does that mean? Like what are lies that like allow that, that allow the wound to be there, allow the enemy to come in and torment us? It's lies about who, who I am, who we are. Um, and they seek to kind of start there. Like what lies, how have you allowed the enemy a foothold? What lies have you believed? And again, you don't need to say this to anybody. This is all done between you and the Lord, they're there to be a guide. They're not there to humiliate you. They're there to set, set you free from this humiliation. So for me, lies that I have carried as long as I can remember are lies like what? Lies like, I am stupid. Lies like, I am not good enough. I am powerless. I am unloved. And each one of these, each of these lies, I've spent my entire life either one, psych, like kind of trying to have these things manifest, like, oh, so th like I am unloved and so I'm going to act out. And see, I told you I was unloved. I told you that. Or, or the other flip side is like, so it, one is like intentionally sabotaging yourself. And the other is, I'm going to do everything in my power to prove this lie wrong, even though I still believe the lie. And I mean, every, I, I look at these lies, I'm stupid, I am not good enough, I am powerless, I am unloved. Like basically, everything I've done in my life, I see has sprouted from these. Uh, like my actions, my choices um, have sprouted from to prove these wrong, trying to prove these wrong. Every fight I've ever been in with my wife, every fight I've been in with any human being has been around one of these things. That person just called me stupid. I'm not gonna let them call me stupid. That, that person is saying I am not good enough. I'm gonna prove them wrong. I'm gonna show them I am a thousand times better than them. I'm, I'm powerless, okay. I am willing to like stand up and blow up and and sin and and show them how powerful I am. I mean, these are all lies. These are all performance-based lies. These are all lies to take my eyes off the Lord, put them on me. And and what what this what the healing process showed me is that none of these lies matter. Like, okay. Let me, let me speak your truth, Lord, about this. Okay, so what if I am stupid? Lord, I am stupid. Praise you, God. Like, because you say you use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. I don't have to perform. I don't have to be good enough. Why? 
because you say all my righteousness is as filthy rags, Lord. Let me, let me receive your healing blood. Let me receive your holiness, your righteousness. I am powerless. Okay, Lord, your strength is made perfect in weakness. I am unloved. Like, Lord, you died for me when I was yet a sinner. That's how much you loved me. And it's realizing that the enemy doesn't have to torment you with these lies. So one, either you can acknowledge that they're lies, or you can just say, I don't even care if they're true, Satan, because the Lord receives me no matter what. The Lord accepts me as his beloved no matter what. And I mean, that's, that's what this deliverance, like, that's what this led us to. Um, it led us to, to healing, um, transformation, and, and the year of Jubilee, the year of the Lord's favor, that, that um, man, it is, so, it is so perfect, the Lord, to have this uh, this weekend because we are free. We have liberty. We have complete liberty. We are under no oppressor. And, and that's what the Lord promised for everyone, for all of us. Um, so leading up to this, um, I was talking with a friend about kind of what we were going for, what I was expecting, maybe. And he, he, the Lord gave me this parallel. Like, I, I love when the Lord shows me something in the Old Testament, and I can take that and say, this Lord, I see, I see what you're doing here. I see what you did here. You gave this for us as, as a witness, right? As a promise that, that this thing in the Old Testament isn't just about what's going on in the Old Testament. It's about us. It's about what you're still doing, and it's about um, the nation of Israel coming out of Egypt. The nation of Israel, they came out of slavery. And everyone's, yes, we're free. And they, they passed through the Red Sea. They were baptized, if you will, like through the Red Sea. The Jehovah God showed miraculous signs and wonders for 40 years, feeding them miraculously, giving them water providing clothing that never wore out, shoes that never wore out for 40 years, miraculous provision. They passed through the Jordan. So everybody that was not alive when they got baptized in the Red Sea, they got baptized. <laughs> like everyone went into the promised land, baptized, and some got double baptized. So whatever, you know, they were like, they got a double portion. Um, and then you know, what happened when they got in the promised land? Immediately, the Lord miraculously delivered them in Jericho. They defeated enemy after enemy. And then, and then it's like, then they stopped. You know, okay, there's Philistines over there. There's the Jebusites, the, 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 the Hivites, the Ammonites. Like, there's all these people around them, surrounding them. They're, but like, but we got, we got major victory at Jericho. Those people are never going to torment us again. That's right. And, and, but these people, like, these are just little people. These are just little things. We'll just leave them. Or we'll take some as slaves. We'll take some as slaves to serve us and not be obedient. And the rest of you just don't care about because it's not that big of a deal. And, and I, I'm wondering, like, what would their story have been like? What would the Israelite story have been like? The King David, all the kings, had they wiped out the enemy? Like, what would the, what would the nation of Israel have looked like under David, under Solomon, under all the way down, had they just been obedient when they entered the promised land and wiped out the enemy? These people that they left, this remnant, is tormenting them, the same people, to this very day. <laughs> you know, a lot of people think like, well, the Philistines, you know, they are the direct, 
there's a direct lineage from the Philistines to the Palestinians. It's the same people. In Arabic, it is the same word. In Arabic, they call the, the Philistines from the Bible Philistines, and they call the, the, the Palestinians living in Gaza and the West Bank, they call them Philistines in Arabic. They acknowledge we are their descendants. We are their same people. What would have happened had Israel just been obedient and cleared the land? And I think a lot of us are like, we're like the Israelites. Uh, Like, did God free us from the bondage of slavery? Yes, amen, we are free. We're not in Egypt. Great, but were were you baptized? Yes, we got baptized. Uh, Yes, all right, and And we've seen miraculous signs and wonders in our lives. Amen. Yes. And and we've seen mighty victories and and destruction of strongholds that used to oppress us. Amen. That's right. That's what we should all experience. But then then what about the the remnant? Is there a remnant of oppressors that that you're like, I, I know God said that we should like take the land, but... It's not that big of a deal. Like, are, are, did we leave a remnant of oppressors to torment us for the rest of our lives? I think, I, I know I did. And I look around, and my brothers that I've talked to, they left a remnant. Like, are we setting ourse- ourselves up and our descendants setting them up for a lifetime of oppression because we weren't obedient to clear the land. Like, were we, we weren't obedient to what God gave us here. Clear this land, Michael. Don't let these things torment you any longer. Be free of these things. And am I, have I in my pride these last 24 years said, like the Jews, hey, I, I, am, I am a son of Abraham. Nobody oppresses me. No. I deceived myself. I was oppressed. I was oppressed and severely oppressed. What would our story look like if we cleared the land, if we cleared the land of our hearts and minds? What would, what would each one of us, all of us look like? What would, what would the church of Christ look like we cleared the land and you know what like I'm receiving the year of jubilee like I'm receiving it and it's there for everybody like nobody has to walk in oppression nobody has to walk uh, being tormented any longer you have the blood of Jesus you have the authority and the power of his spirit Um, there is freedom and it's for everybody. And not everybody may be able to go to Bear Creek Ranch or any of these other, you know, things, but it's there. And I think we got to ask. Okay. Uh, so Hazel wants me to say, um, uh, so how did this... How, okay, so I said some things that I got set free from at the beginning of my walk, things like greed, things like, um, what did I say? Drugs, gone, never going back, um, never gone back. What did I get freed from this last week or two weeks ago? Um, for me, I would say I went in there thinking, I, I know two main struggles. Boom, boom, Strugg- like I've struggled with and... I ignored it, and then it's just like the people grew strong around me, right? These people grew strong around me. What were they? Lust, anger. Um, and there are times I'm like, I, I, I got these guys under control, right? Like, like the Israelites, God would send a judge in my life, and I would wipe them out, you know, get a jawbone of a donkey, and, and then, you know, there'd be a time of peace. And, and then they grew up around me again, and it's like, no, Lord, no more. And um, this was not like the chief and ruling spirit, neither of these were, but it's how the chief and ruling spirit manifests in my life 
is that I seek these things out. And, and these things feed into the lies of, I am stupid. No, you're not. Like, rise up, like, you know, and like, show yourself as a man. Um, or I'm not good enough. I'm powerless. No, no one's going to tell me I'm powerless. Like, and, and the rising of the anger is to fight these things, to fight these lies. And I, I don't need to fight these lies. Uh, I don't need to. Uh, and I, I've noticed a dramatic difference in the last two weeks um, from this, a dramatic difference in freedom from lust and sexual sin. And like, it's, it's like, it, it, it feels a lot like what happened when I was saved. Like when I was saved and just that, the cutting off, uh, the cutting off and the dying, <laughs> the dying of the thing. Um, and it's been, it's been liberating. It's been, man, freeing. And I know that people want to, don't want to talk about dirt in church. And uh, look, there's dirt, and he can clean us. And he's done it. He's done it. 